Hello volunteers. My name is Sarah Steiner and this is Bonnie Lewis. We are going to guide you through the process of sampling the water quality of your lake through the Volunteer Lake Assessment Program. You are watching this because you are either a current volunteer or interested in becoming one. As a VLAP volunteer, you will play an integral role in monitoring the state's lakes and ponds. Your hard work will allow DES biologists and other state, federal, and local agencies to assess lake and stream water quality, establish long-term water quality trends, and report those findings to interested parties. As a volunteer, you serve as an ambassador to your lake. You will be communicating with the DES biologist about events in the watershed that may be affecting lake quality, whether in a good or a bad way. You are our eyes and ears, and we rely on you to keep tabs on what's happening at your lake. You are a citizen scientist. You're responsible for making sure that the data you collect is of excellent quality. We utilize the data to meet federal and state reporting requirements. It is essential that you collect lake samples from designated stations during designated times and follow proper sampling procedures. Now that we've reviewed the volunteer responsibilities, let's start monitoring. The first thing we recommend is drafting a monthly schedule that would include proposed sampling dates and alternate dates if the weather or other events impede. We recommend sampling once per month in June, July, and August. You may sample more or less frequently as desired. Please consult with the VLAP coordinator or your satellite laboratory manager about your proposed schedule. This will allow us to reserve equipment for you and to staff the laboratories accordingly. This will also allow you to coordinate with fellow volunteers and lake residents. You may find that residents will want to join you to understand what you are doing and you may even recruit some new volunteers. Once your monitoring schedule is in place, you want to be prepared for your sampling trip. Here are a few things to consider. Be sure to check the weather report. Do not sample during thunderstorms, tropical storms, or hurricanes. Do not sample during extreme fog or high wind conditions. Safety comes first, so please follow all boating regulations. If you have your sample bottles already, pre-label them before you head out. You can print labels from the computer or label with a waterproof pen marker. Remember to label the bottles with the lake name, the town, the station name, the date and time you sampled. You may consult your sampling station map for a list of station names and locations. Now compile the proper paperwork. You'll need a field data sheet, a self-audit form, a station map, and a new station form in case you have to sample from a place that you haven't sampled from previously. Check your equipment to make sure you have all that you need and that is in good working order. On our table on the extreme left we have the camera bottle and with it is the blue sender and the silver messenger. Behind that is one meter marked chain. Next we have the Secchi disc, the black and white piece of equipment. Behind that we have the view scope. And then depending on how you collect your chlorophyll A sample, you may use an integrated tube and you will need a bucket, whether you use the tube or the camera bottle. Also, please remember to bring a cooler with plenty of ice. Make sure you have a size that will accommodate all your sample bottles. And please make sure to put your samples into the cooler as soon as you take them. Remember, quality control is important. So please sample between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. for the best accuracy and for consistency. Samples must be returned to the Limnology Center before 3 p.m. Monday through Thursdays or before 11 a.m. on Friday or consult with your satellite laboratories for their specific drop-off times. If you sample on the weekend, please sample on Sunday afternoon. Samples must be kept on ice and returned to the laboratories within 24 hours of collection. As a VLAP volunteer, you will receive a field manual. 
This manual should be brought into the field with you so you can consult it while sampling. It includes a detailed checklist of everything you need to bring into the field with you, as well as detailed instructions on how to sample. If you misplace your field manual, you can print one from the VLAP website. You are now ready to sample, so hop aboard your boat. Make sure you take life jackets and an anchor with a long enough line to hold you at the deep spot. We'll be there for a while. It is important that while collecting your deep spot samples, you don't drift out of the area. If you do drift out of the deep spot, please reposition the boat to be back at the deep spot so you can continue collecting your samples. We recommend collecting your deep spot samples first and then moving on to the tributary portion of sampling. There are a few methods you can use to locate the deep spot. One is known as triangulation. Triangulation uses three reference points from the shore to locate the deep spot. Other methods include fish finders, depth finders, and sounding lake bottom. Once you've located the deep spot, and before you start collecting your samples, you will want to complete the top portion of your field data sheet and self-audit form. This information includes the lake name, town, the names of the volunteer monitors, the time and date sampled, as well as weather conditions during sampling, and any prior rain events. Subsequent sections of the field data sheet and self-audit form can be completed as a As a side note, follow your field data sheet for recommended order in which to collect your samples and follow your self-audit form for each part of field sampling. This form walks you through specific sampling tasks. Check the task as they are complete and mark any permanent com pertinent comments in the comments section. Now it's time to start deep spot sampling. First, we recommend collecting samples from each thermal layer in the lake. This information is located under the deep spot sample section of your field data sheet and sample depths are predetermined by the biologist. To collect your deep spot samples, you will need a camera bottle, calibrated chain, secchi disc, view scope, bucket, integrated tube, and sample bottles. First, we'll demonstrate how to use the camera bottle. Take your calibrated chain and first th thread the chain through the sender. Next, Thread the chain through your camera bottle. When you reach the bottom, clip your chain at the bottom of the camera, camera bottle to securely hold it to the chain. The next thing you want to do is open your camera bottle. To do this, you want to pull apart both ends of the camera bottle until it clicks. Once the bottle's open, you can put it into the water to collect your samples. But first, Place the sender on the top of the bottle. Next, lower the camera bottle into the water to the desired depth. That depth should be marked on your chain in every half of a meter. The next thing you'll do is attach the messenger to the chain. Next, drop the messenger to close the bottle. This will collect water at a specific depth at the deep spot. Once you've closed the bottle at the desired depth, bring it back up and fill your sample bottles. But before you do that, please check and make sure there's no sediment in the bottle. If there's sediment in the bottle, please dump out the water and collect a new sample. The first bottle you want to fill is your large white bottle. To do that, empty a little bit of the water into the bottle, rinse, and fill the bottle. Once you've filled your large white bottle, you'll want to fill your small brown bottle. Remember to fill your small brown bottle from the large white bottle. This bottle contains acid. Please do not fill this bottle directly from the camera bottle. And please do not rinse it. Fill your small brown bottle just to the shoulder. Now 
Then, fill your large white bottle back up to the top. You can, can re repeat this process for each one of your sampling depths at the deep spot. Following the order on your field data sheet, the next task will be to collect your chlorophyll A sample. The depth from which you collect your chlorophyll A sample will be predetermined by the biologist and marked on your field data sheet. If your depth is 5 meters or less, we recommend using the composite method. To do this method, you will need a bucket and a camera bottle. First, you will want to rinse your bucket with lake water and then discard. Next, you will want to collect a full camera bottle full of water from each depth starting at 5 meters or less. For example, if your composite is 5 meters, collect your samples from 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter, and 5 meter. The water will be mixed in the bucket all together. And then you'll fill a large brown bottle for your poor fillet sample. This bottle does not contain acid, so you may rinse it. Please rinse and discard. Next, fill the bottle up to the neck with water. That completes your composite method. The next method we'll discuss is the integrated tube. If the starting depth for your chlorophyll A sample is six meters or more, we recommend using the integrated tube method. This method requires an integrated tube, a bucket, and a calibrated chain. First, you'll want to rinse your bucket with a little bit of lake water and discard. Next, attach your calibrated chain to the eye hook on the integrated tube. Then, lower the integrated tube and the calibrated chain down to the desired depth, for example, six meters. Put the six meter depth of the chain and the tube on the surface of the water. Next, crimp the top of the tube. Then, pull up on the chain to haul the weighted end of the tube out of the water. Then, put the weighted end of the tube into the bucket. Uncrimp the top of the tube and raise the tube above your head to lower the water out of it. Then, you want to fill your large brown bottle. Once again, this bottle does not contain acid and you can rinse it. So rinse the bottle with a small portion of the water in the bucket and discard. Then, fill the bottle to the top. The next piece of field equipment we'll demonstrate is the Seki disc. This is for taking transparency readings, another field test that you will do from the boat. This is your piece of equipment, Seki disc, black and white sections. You will attach a meter marked chain to the top of the disc. You can also put a messenger on the meter marked chain for some weight. If it happens to be a windy day, it'll help you send the um, Seki disc down straight. So you'll do this in partners. Your partner will lower the disc into the water. One person will watch and sight the disc until it just disappears from the sight. And then he or she will ask her partner to roll the disc back up slowly until he can just distinguish the white from the black. The person viewing the disc, disc needs to see both sections, the white and the black. Once that is done, just pinch the marking off at the surface of the water, look at it, and record it on your field data sheet. You're going to repeat this process twice, and you're going to swap places with your partner. So this time I will be the one sighting the disc, roll it down until it just disappears. I'll bring it back up until I can just distinguish the white and the black. I will pinch that, that surface level of the water, read my results, record it on the sheet. We now have two readings which we will average. If you do this reading without the view scope, please do it on the shady side of the boat. If you choose to use a view scope, which is this piece of equipment, you would do so on the sunny side of the boat 
You put this end of the view scope just under the surface of the water. Look at the view scope through the view. Look at the second disc, sorry, through the view scope. And again, just sight it until it disappears. Bring it up. Black and white distinction. Pinch it off at the water surface and record. Again, swap partners, two readings, and please give us the average. An optional task for in-lake sampling would be E. coli. For example, if you were concerned about a beach area, you may want to collect an E. coli sample. First, we recommend collecting these samples at knee-depth water. So either wade into the water to knee-depth, or drive your boat close enough to shore to be in approximately knee-depth water. Next, obtain a small sterilized bottle for your E. coli sample. Open the bottle but be careful not to touch the inside of the cap or the neck of the bottle. Next, invert the bottle, submerge the bottle into the water, and scoop up using a U-shaped motion to collect your sample. Cap the bottle, and make sure that you write the station location of your sample on the back side of your field data sheet. Last but not least is your tributary sampling. Please consult your station map for a list of tributaries that you've sampled in the past and you may want to sample on a regular basis. For each tributary sample collected, please fill out the back part of your field data sheet 